problem one. Before we embark on Gaussian elimination, let's take a broad look at this problem and figure out what the solution will look like. Now what we have here is five columns and each one of them lives in R2. And we have two linearly independent columns. For example, the first two columns are linearly independent. They're linearly independent because neither one of them is a multiple of the other. And for two columns to be linearly dependent, one of them would necessarily have to be a multiple of the other. That's the only way in which a set of two vectors can be linearly dependent if one vector is a strict multiple of the other. And among these vectors, neither one is a multiple of the other because the first entries are in proportion 2 to 1 and the second entries are in proportion 7 to 3, which does not equal 2 to 1. So these columns are linearly independent, so they span the entire R2. The system is therefore guaranteed to have a solution regardless of what the right-hand side is. So this problem will have a solution. Will it have a unique solution? Well, we have five columns in R2. Five columns in R2. So the columns will be necessarily linearly dependent because we have more vectors than the dimension of the vector space. But we actually know a much more nuanced formula. We know that the dimension of the null space plus the dimension of the column space equals the number of columns, which is 5. And the dimension of the column space is 2, because it's R2. So the column space is two-dimensional, therefore the null space is three-dimensional. So not only do we not expect a unique solution here, we actually expect a great deal of richness in the null space because it will be three-dimensional. Now all that's left is to figure out the actual numbers and for that we'll perform Gaussian elimination. Now just to save some space, we'll replace this column of unknowns with this symbol. It takes up a lot less space and let's just agree that this, these three dots refer to x, y, z, t, and u. So let's proceed with Gaussian elimination and for that let's make a copy of a problem so we have a reference and so that we can see progress as we're performing Gaussian elimination. The first step of Gaussian elimination is to subtract 3 of row 1 from row 2 because our first mini goal is to eliminate the 3 with this 1, which is our first pivot, so let's make it bold. So 1 is our pivot, and subtracting 3 of row 1 from row 2 eliminates this 3, turns the 7 into 7 minus 2 times 3. Let me put the number 3 here so we remember the multiple we're dealing with. So 7 becomes 7 minus 6, which is 1, 10 becomes 10 minus 9, which is also 1. 13 becomes 13 minus 12, which is also 1. And finally, 16 becomes 16 minus 15, which is also 1. How nice. Now let's perform the same operation on the right-hand side. And minus 16 will be replaced with minus 16 minus minus 12. So the result is minus 16 plus 12, or minus 4. And the first step of Gaussian elimination is finished. We can now perform the second step of Gaussian elimination. So let's make another copy. Realize that this is our second pivot, so let's make it bold. And the second operation is to subtract 2 of row 2 from row 1, with the goal being to eliminate this 2. So let's put the number 2 here. And we find that this becomes 0, of course, by design. This 3 becomes a 2. The 4, be excuse me, 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. And 5 minus 2 is 3. And let's not forget to perform the same action on the right-hand side, where minus 4 becomes minus 4 minus 2 times minus 4. So what I did verbally in the previous step, I now spelled out in an equation. So this of course is positive 4 because it's minus 4 
plus 8, so we have positive 4. And Gaussian elimination is now finished because we ran out of pivots. The next pivot would have come in row 3, which we, of course, don't have. So now that Gaussian elimination and, in fact, Jordan back substitution are complete, we can figure out the general solution to the original problem. And here it comes. So our unknowns are x, y, z, t, u. The three dots won't help us now because the solution will be just a stall. Let me make sure that nothing jumps. Uh, things are jumping a little bit. So I will copy this part into its own box. And that will prevent things from jumping too much. Okay, so this is now our reduced equation. And it is sufficient to figure out the general solution. Our first order of business is to figure out a particular solution, which is to decompose the right-hand side with respect to the columns of this matrix. And of course, now that we have these two magical columns, this task is a piece of cake. All we need to do is take one of the, excuse me, four of the first column, negative four of the second column. I will now right align this vector. And we don't need any of the remaining columns. We're done with a particular solution. So this is actually a good moment to return to the original system and make, and make sure that this solution satisfies the equation. So let's see what happens if we take 4 of the first column and minus 4 of the second column. 4 of the first column and minus 4 of the second column. In the first entry, we will have 4 minus 8, negative 4, perfect. And in the second column, we will have 12 minus 28, negative 16. So that's a good sign. It looks like we're doing everything correctly. Now it's time to figure out the null space. So the first element of the null space will come from the third column, which is one of the first column plus one of the second column. That produces the third column. So subtracting one will produce the zero column, which is our goal. So one, one, minus one, zero, zero. This is the first element of the null space. Now for the second element of the null space, the second element of the null space will of course come from this column, which is two of the first column plus one of the second column. We ignore the third column and subtracting the fourth column will produce the zero column. And so the element of the null space is 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. So now for the final element of the null space, we will look at the fifth column, the last column, which of course is 3 of the first, 1 of the second, ignore the third, ignore the fourth, and subtract the fifth to produce the zero column. So this is the null space, and this is the particular solution, and the system is solved. And later on, when we study matrix multiplication, I will show you a fantastic way of verifying that our solution is correct. But for now, just to check one of these vectors, let's copy it, let's look at it right next to the system itself, and make sure that three of the first column plus one of the second column will equal the fifth column. So three of the first plus one of the second equals five here, and nine plus 17 equals 16. So that's very reassuring that what you see on the screen right now is the correct general solution right 